Ah, uh, hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Day In, Day Out podcast. Oh, uh, yes. Today on episode 120, I was very privileged to have on the podcast uh, Lincoln. Uh, he is a stand up comedian. He is also a podcaster as well. His podcast is called uh, B Plot. And yeah, we talked about many things uh, today. We talked about about uh, how he got started in stand-up, uh, what he is doing uh, to sort of keep up his reps in the stand-up community, and yeah, we talked about uh, many different films and what his podcast's about. So please sit back, enjoy the show, and yeah, have a fantastic day. Yes, please. <laughs> ah. Hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to the Day In, Day Out podcast. Today on the podcast, whoo, God help me if I don't get the last part of his name correct. Uh, I have a Lincoln Vander uh, Wasserhausen. Uh, I messed That's up. Uh, fun to best, um, Yeah, But it's okay. We can, we can try again at the end and see if uh, you get it. No eyes, no eyes. Work on that. Uh, he is a stand up, he is a podcast host. Uh, he hosts a podcast called uh, B Plot. Uh, I've got to say, it's a very fun podcast. I'll let him go into more details about that. And yes, today it's the second podcast of the year for myself, and it is episode 120. Lincoln, how are you today, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Um, went for a nice long walk. Um, didn't take my headphones with me, so just had a strong walk and just wrestled with my own feelings. And with <laughs> the day outside, it was, it was pretty great. Uh, wrestled with your own feelings. Hopefully the beast for the East too is not like really affecting you too badly. I mean, look, it was very nice. And I'm not from a place that has snow. Um, <laughs> In general so uh it's actually been like i think the first two days was really lovely i sent my mum uh pictures and i was yeah. like oh look how nice it is but i think by the end of the second day i was like all right that's enough <laughs> um i'd like to i'd like to get back to the regular schedule weather now but um it's looking good it's looking good um how about yourself how was your day uh, my day has been good like basically uh up up with the lock working out uh, in my house uh, unfortunately, no gyms, but you know what I mean? Can't complain, got to get on with it and keep pushing forward. And yes, the Beast of the East did surprise me with a fresh layer of snow. So hopefully tomorrow morning should be able to get out, get for go for a run. And yes, and it's brought me here to you today. Yeah. Like how long have, like may I ask, how long have you been in the UK? Because you're an essay lad. Uh, mm, that's correct. So I, uh, my partner's from, from here. So I moved to the UK, uh, I want to say September of 2019. Ah. September of 2019 or August, I can't remember. Um, but then as a result, I had about five or six months of <laughs> being able to enjoy myself, um, being able to have a good time before uh, things went been, uh, been horribly wrong <laughs> so um yeah so i've been here since september 2019 i haven't seen much haven't done much but um hopefully when things start quieting down i i reckon we'll be able to kind of you know enjoy some of the city and go and see bands and movies and all these kinds of things yeah no i'm sure you will i'm sure you will like with like so was it a case of your partner was like the sort of driving force for you to come over here or was it uh, something else? You were like, yes, I must come to the UK and like, yeah, see, I see what I can do, see what I can come. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it was actually, it was my partner. She, um, she's from here, she's from London. And uh, we were doing long distance for a while. And, um, but you know, that gets old after a bit of time as well. So that's, that's the driving force, that's why I came. Um, that's why I decided to live in London as well. Mm, excellent. And with that, like, I have to, another question I have to ask, how long have you been in the world of stand-up? Um, 
Okay, so I started doing stand-up maybe, I want to say 2014 or 15. Yeah. Um, and I started, in, uh, I started in Beijing, China. I was, uh, I was living out there maybe three, four years. Okay. And uh, I was just, there was a small scene. It was a little like open mic comedy. And I was too nervous the first time around. So I went, I think it was on the Sunday night. I went on the Sunday night and it was on Sundays and Wednesdays. And I went on the Sunday night and it was raining. And I was like, you know, people will show up and like the open mic was canceled. So there was no one there. So like I took like the hour journey back, went back to Wednesday. And I asked the guy who was hosting it, like, well, where do you sign up? Blah, blah. And um, he kind of really was really dismissive. Just tied me off. He's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, the guy then subsequently became like a good friend because um, I went back the next, the following Sunday. Yeah. And I did okay. I did okay. Um, now I'm very embarrassed about it. And um, that's kind of how I got started. I just kept coming back every Wednesday, every Sunday. Eventually more nights came. So you start going on a Tuesday. And um, it was a very nice scene. Um, and that's, I guess that's kind of where the bug bit uh, when it comes to stand up. Yeah. Like, this is the thing. Like, okay. I am. I am surprised you are, yes, I started in China, like <laughs> with stand-up because I, the whole thing I see as a total outsider to the whole craft of comedy, it's like people would normally go, yes, this is like, this is the part of the world I'm in, like my small town here, but to sort of start doing comedy in China, it must have had a very sort of different vibe uh, to it. Yeah, it's because it's, um, at least in the community that I was in, it was very kind of like expats, right? It's yeah. people who went over there. Um, a lot of people work quite high paying jobs, uh, a lot of the, the expats it should be. Mm. And um, yeah, but like, you know, you kind of want the comforts of home. So you want, um, you know, your favorite burger restaurant or you want um, to join a hockey team or a lacrosse team or whatever it is for you or a football team. And one of those things is, you know, stand-up. People want to go out on a Tuesday or on a Friday night and they want to laugh. And like they want to laugh at themselves. They want to laugh at the situation. And um, I, in, in that sense, it's, it's a very like, a, it's a very communal thing that people miss. Mm. And um, yes, but, you know, it's just it's kind of where I started. Um, and, you talk, and you talk about the first things that you, everyone talks about. Like you talk about, you know, masturbation and just i don't know relationships and then like eventually like you get bored of that and then you move on to the next thing and then to the next thing um but yeah that's that's how it, i actually i look uh, on that time quite fondly because there was quite there's some quite good comics that i think are like professionals now that came out from that from that time so like i had a nice little scene from like 2015 Okay, so was it a case of you were just bouncing around in Beijing or was it a case of you started to push yourself in other cities through China with comedy there? Or was it just no, I, I, I mean, I, I stayed out there for most of the time. Uh, I was studying and then I was working. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was just, it became fun, became a community. My friends all started being comics and... Comedy is one of those really fun things where like, I always like to say that um, in any other kind of like performance art, the distance between the top and the, and the bottom is really, really big. Mm. Like if you are just like a singer in a, in a nightclub or in like a jazz band, the odds of you running into like the Rolling Stones is so astronomically high. They're not just going to come and play your club. But with comedy, I feel like um, the distance between the top and the bottom is actually really small because everyone has to try out jokes somewhere. Mm. And usually it's at an open mic or at like a, a show where everyone like has a little bucket where you collect at the end. So you can run into really big comics when they're just working things out and when they're just kind of hanging out. And there's, and that, that's what I love about it. It's like the kind of the tribe, sorry, it's the, the kind of the tribe that comes with comedy. Yeah. Like, what would you say are some of the, like, was there sort of key things you've learned uh, from, like, your time in comedy? Key things? Um, 
it's very hard for me to like get embarrassed uh, nowadays. Like mm -hmm. I, if I, you know, because it's kind of bombing or, or not doing well, it's kind of part of the game. So when it does happen, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, people will forget, like they'll get over it. Um, so like, that's, I, I suppose that's one of the, the things that I kind of take with it. And also just kind of accepting that, you know, anything like creative that you try and do, like it takes time, mm -hmm. like you not you don't get it right the first time, but you have to keep doing it so that when you do get a chance to get it right, that you can get it right. And um, I think that's definitely what I take from my from my time in comedy. Right. I, I have to ask, like this is a thing, like when, like being a comic, starting out, going with everything like this, you mentioned bombing and you don't get embarrassed by it. Like, but like there's like, there must be sort of a couple of key moments where you can remember like bombing and triumph. Could you actually go into say one of bombing and one of triumph? What examples? I, I, can, I can tell you a couple of bombs I remember very well. I remember, excuse me. I remember um, I got asked to do a gig. Mm. It was in Beijing, it was like a little bit further out of town. And a comic was touring through, I can't remember the name of who, the name of the comic. And um, the gig was at like four in the afternoon, which is unusual. Comedy doesn't tend to work well during the day. Yeah. Um, people don't, people feel like uh, self-conscious. Um, they get, like I know at places like Edinburgh and like festivals, there's like comedy tents where people do it during the day, but that's unusual. Mm. Uh, for the most part. But anyway, this guy booked this gig on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday afternoon. And um, yeah, it was just kids. It was just kids there. And it was like, because um, <laughs> the, main, the main gig was, yeah. um, the, main, the main gig was like, the, the head guy, sorry, was like, he did like a, I think a ventriloquist. He had like a dummy or something. So he could do a bit of magic and could do like ventriloquism, but he also had like a dirty act where he was like really blue, but he was doing his kid's act. And then like, I had to open and like, I had to go on and be like, and at the time as well, my material very blue. And I realized that like, I swear a lot. Oh no. <laughs> and so like, I just went down to silence and like, it was kids. So like the kids don't like boo or like say, we don't like you or just not laugh. Like the kids just like lose interest and like start playing. Yeah. And like walking around in front of the stage and stuff and like, <laughs> like listening to like music to like Peppa Pig. Like they just don't care. Oh, Peppa That's like, Pig. How old well, was you? Such a bad, such a bad bomb. Um, and um, the other time was like, I was at an Italian restaurant and it was so bad because this guy had a birthday party and um, he, uh, the guy had a birthday party and he wanted to have some comedy, but the room wasn't set up for it. It was just like a restaurant and he invited his friends. Yeah. And uh, I performed, it was me and two other guys. Two guys did, they did okay. And then I was supposed to come on and do like 20 minutes. And um, yeah, it's just, it went well. And then it's just, the waiter started like coming out and like serving dessert while I was on stage and like walking around me and like, oh. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and eventually I just like, I got, I was, I got so angry that I just like, I started shouting at everyone and I just started sc screaming. And weirdly, like the gig then started going very well. Like, like <laughs> got very well. yeah, people were really into it, really into like being shouted at and abused. And they were like, oh, this is funny. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that was one of the, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them that I don't even remember. Most bombs aren't as spectacular as that. And most bombs are just like, eh, no one really laughs. Or then like once every 50 or 60 gigs, like, I don't know, someone wants to stab you or something awful. Okay. <laughs> well, something I, I, over like, I imagine that, that seems interesting. That hasn't happened to me. That hasn't okay. happened to me, <laughs> my point. But my point is like every now and again, something outrageous happens. That's just like a spectacular uh, bomb. But most of them are just kind of, just kind of, a, you know, people don't laugh. They just kind of politely yeah. <laughs> applaud. 
or they come afterwards very condescendingly they go oh that was a good set yeah and you're like no you didn't laugh so it wasn't I can see it now like it, when you mentioned something like coming with at you with a knife just like uh knock knock who's there security he has a knife come quickly help me <laughs> that's like oh man that's a I've never I can't think I don't think I've ever gigged anywhere that has security so okay. <laughs> if you the guy has the knife that's like that's just the way it was meant to be <laughs> most, most of the gigs I do the guy comes at you with a knife we like you can fend him off with the mic stand, but I was like, "Oh well, <laughs> I had a good run." <laughs> that's a that's a wrap for you, yeah. <laughs> like so, right? So with like the way I understand comedy and every like well stand up, like I like I love going to the gym. Without going to the gym, getting my reps in, I don't get stronger. I don't get conditioned, and like you know, what I mean you fall, like, I fall away. Like, how have you been getting your, like, sort of reps in uh, presently uh, with, uh, how can I say, Planet Lockdown 2020 slash 2021? Um, I haven't, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I haven't been atrophying to, like, take it further, the analogy. But this is why I started the, uh, me along with another guy, I started doing the podcast just because, um, that was, you know, a way that we can like do something creative mm. and get our names out there. And also like the thing with podcasts, um, I listen to quite a lot of them and I listen to a bunch of comedians podcasts, uh, like different ones, but you kind of have to have, um, do you know the comedian Andrew Schultz? I don't know if you know him. Oh yes, I do know Andrew. He does. Flagrant. He does. A, yeah. Yeah. He's one of my absolute favorites. I really, I really enjoy his comedy and, and just like what he does. And like, one of the things that he said was you have to, um, it's not like you're not just going to show up to a club and be like, book me mm. when the people who are already there almost all have agents They have TV credits. They have like years in the business, they have relationship that you probably don't have. So what you need to do is you need to build something outside of the system and build your own audience and get people into you so that you can go to the clubs and be like, listen, I can come to this thing and I can 50 people will show up because they follow me on this. And that could be anything. It doesn't have to be a podcast. Um, I know people who do really well on TikTok, um, whether or not people will actually come out and follow and see you if you do it, I don't know. But the point is like, you've got to do something else to just get your name out there when you're not on stage. Cause you're on stage when you're starting out for like, if you're lucky, uh, five minutes a night, um, four nights a week, if you're lucky. So it, uh, you have to build other things outside of it. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been doing this podcast with my good friend, uh, Sam J. Golden, B Plot, B Plot Podcast, B for Brendan. And um, yeah, we just look at movies that came out on the same day. And one is a like, big hit and the other one is like a big flop. And that's what we discuss. Yeah, like I've I've been looking at that, and yeah, uh, the one what stands out to me is uh, the Phantom and the Rock because, like, yeah, I I remember both of these both of these movies very well. Let's just say the Phantom, woo, oh boy, <laughs> but the Rock, you got to say, yeah, at the time that was one of the most iconic action films at the time yeah because i remember michael bay had a run that it run kind of concurrent with nicholas cage i think that the three years that nicholas cage had in the in the late 90s is like some of the some of the greatest action movies ever yeah um i think it was con air the rock yeah and face face off was okay. the last one um michael bay didn't do that one he did john wood did yeah john wood did John Wood did that one, but Nicolas Cage's run was tremendous. Mm. And so, like, I grew up on those movies. I grew up watching. I've watched The Rock so many times. Uh, Connie, I've watched more times than I can count. But that was a funny episode. It was a funny episode because um, it was one of the earlier ones. And I think The Phantom is an interesting movie with uh, Billy Zane. It's because I think people forget because like Marvel's so big and superhero movies are so big. That superhero movies used to be trash. They used to be like bottom of the barrel. 
right? No one would, it would kill your career. There was like one and it was Blade. No. And then, and then like, if you, sorry, if you remember over the course of like 20 years, how absolutely ridiculous the Batman movies were. They were ridiculous. They weren't serious movies until, until they got, you know, until Marvel came along and those movies got revived. I think until the first Spider-Man and then Iron Man, and that's when it like really took off into the stratosphere. Yeah, like, but, um, yeah, but like this is the thing. Okay, yeah, uh, the Phantom, uh, um, like the Phantom. And uh, if you really want to see a bad superhero film, like watch, watch, watch Captain America. Captain America around about the same time as the like original Batman film. Oh yeah, you'll you'll see a track in that. Well, the original Batman, the first, the uh, which uh, one, the nineteen ninety one. The 1991, like Tim Burton. Oh, then. It was a Captain America around about the same time. Uh, oh, man, I didn't that, know that. Oh, oh, yeah. Like it was, oh, oh I, don't ask me who starred in it, but yeah, Captain America versus like the Red Skull. Red Skull looking like he's like some Italian, like, yeah, dress up in Italian Armani, like suit. Oh, that's and nuts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out. I'm gonna, that's a good shout. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, don't ask me what, it's just, oh, watched it, and I watched it again because star for, like, actual frigging, ta- like, film talent, and it was like, right, no, not a good movie at all, but, like, I would say the thing what kicked off superhero films, like, for me, you mentioned it before, Blade, with Blade, mm. in, like, a sort of, like, Blade, ne- no one knew about Blade, came in, it had... Yeah had the best entrance ever for a film, uh, for a character. Yeah, the, oh. yeah, the, oh, it was good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Walker. Oh, yeah. With, oh, the ra- with the row scene. I remember watching Blade. That must have been like 2000. I must have been nine or 10. I can't remember. It was around about that time. And I got in and it was like, we, I don't know what the film classification, the ages and stuff are, but it would have been here. I thought in South Africa it was 16. Yeah, and I got in when I was not sixteen, oh. <laughs> and uh, I just went to go watch that. <laughs> right, you must be like, yes, loving it. So, out of what you've done so far for the podcast, which has been like, apart from the rock, which ha- which would you say has been a great impact film for you? Oh, in what sense? In, in the sense that it's a thing that I didn't think I would enjoy or I think the episode that was the best? Um, I would say, let's say film you didn't think you were going to enjoy. Man, if you can give me one second, I'll look at, the, I'll look at it and I'll tell you. Because a lot of these movies I go into and you know what actually it is? It's seven. Seven? Is it seven because I... I often, I don't know if you do this, I just lie about having seen movies. <laughs> if someone, as if, especially if it's a movie I feel like I should have seen. I, and someone's like, oh, did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, I saw it. But I didn't see it. And so Seven was one that I actually hadn't seen before, but I'd lied about countless times. And it was really, um, I was really taken, even though I know the ending, I was really taken with how well it was made. I thought that was, that was absolutely tremendous. I think it was a, like a great, great film. Um, what else? I wanna, I'll have a look and then I'll give you a one. I think the best episode though, weirdly enough, is an episode um, in the earlier ones as well, when we did Legally Blonde and um, a movie called Made with Vince Vaughn and John Favreau. And I think that's the funniest, um, I think that's the funniest episode we ever did. It was just um, the idea of like being a blonde lawyer and that being something that's um, to be ashamed of, which is very funny to us. And we had a lot of fun with it, if I can remember. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will, I'll, I'll stop looking down because I realize it's uh, it's messing up. Uh, oh, it's not no. as lively to say it's me. It's just me off screen. Where is that? Sorry. I'm going to just see the YouTube the yeah. YouTube comments starting to 
<laughs> so come out with great me. podcast, great interview. Yeah, just really hated when uh, really hated when you looked down for about three minutes. <laughs> no, it's all it's all good. It's all good. But like, I've got to say, like I do like the premise of your podcast. Like basically, mm. it hit and miss. But like the whole thing is, what I've like I, you haven't got yet. Looking at your sort of like episodes where it's been like okay. You could say that, like, you could say that is a hit, but it wasn't a hit at the time. It was like, for example, like the Shawshank Redemption, number one on the IMDb. Mm -hmm. If you went to the sit, like, if no one watched that thing in the cinema whatsoever, it was like, yeah, it was either when DVDs first came out here in the UK, it was like, you either got Shawshank Redemption or The Sixth Sense. Yeah, came out yeah. just at that time, which like Six Sense was highly successful. Shawshank Redemption did nothing in the cinema, and then all of a sudden it was like, yes, Oscars left, right, and center, best all-time film, and like, yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, we did. Funny enough, we I think the Six Sense would probably be coming out next. We actually did that very recently. Ah, did the Six Sense that came out on the same day as a Ben Stiller film called Mystery Men. But they also do like a sort of a, a superhero thing. Yeah, but that's an awesome film. Come yeah, on. no, it's not. That, <laughs> film was, that film was terrible. Oh. That film was trash. How, uh, how dare you, sir? How dare you? I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Um, it was a terrible film. Um, the, Sixth Sense, yeah. the Sixth Sense was all right. The Sixth Sense I enjoyed. But the problem with The Sixth Sense is certain movies like have a twist in it so like um the, the other problem with it is like if you know the twist is coming you also you have to invest in it all the way and i thought with the sixth sense it, it like it wasn't it was all building up to this to this twist slowly but surely and once you know it's coming you, you're kind of just like waiting to get to it but the, the thing is it's so well it's so well acted and so like atmospheric and um also I don't know why no one has ever thought of this. And like, I love when movies do this. I love when movies ask a very simple question that is difficult to answer, which mm. is, why do ghosts actually want from us? If there, if there were a ghost, what would that ghost want? Mm. And I can't believe in all of you know, human history that we've been telling stories that no one went, actually, did, did you actually ask the ghost? Just ask the ghost, what do they want? And then, you know, there you go, there's the sixth sense. Yeah. So I thought that was a really, a really fun way of looking at it. Ah, no, like this is the thing with regards to Sixth Sense. Like when I watched that, I was like, oh, okay, I was like, ah, oh. I, I, as you said, yeah, I saw it coming. I was like, right, there you go. And like then M Night Shyamalan was forever trying to catch everyone out with the big twists in every yeah. recurring film he did. Uh, until the point where oh, he did like oh what was that film with Will Smith and Jaden Smith? Um, was it? Is that After, After Earth? Earth? Yes. Oh, oh, I watched like twenty minutes of that. I, I <laughs> so like, going. Yes, it was a film so bad, so like so terrible. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Also, the other thing about the Sixth Sense, there's a great comedian, uh, Nate Bergazzi. Such a such a funny comedian. Probably my favorite one working. And he has a bit about like how we looked at uh, the sixth sense. It's clear this guy's gotten shot, but such is the nature of marriage that we believe that someone's wife wouldn't talk to him for a year <laughs> after he got shot. After he got shot, and then his wife went, "Oh." this marriage is broken and she just stopped speaking to him. It's clear that he's dead. That's the only explanation. But most people watch the movie and just went, yeah, that's just what marriage is like. People just don't talk to each other for a whole year. Right, uh, yeah. Carry on. <laughs> it's like, I'm just like, yeah. yeah. How's your day been there? Oh, that's good. That's nice. You know, like <laughs> she cheat and she cheats on him blatantly in her bookshop and everyone the whole time is like, man, she's going through trauma. Bruce Willis probably said some things you don't know. It's probably, probably, you know, it's probably drinking a lot. 
<laughs> Everyone just kind of accepted that uh, Bruce Willis uh, deserved whatever treatment he got from his from his wife. Oh, but um, yeah, like I said, that's not my joke, so I don't want anyone to accuse me of it. It's a very funny comic called Nate Brigazzi. He's like my favorite comic now. So, Ow, that's where, uh, yeah, like so with this, like. You're doing films, like, and like, yeah, Lord knows there's a lot of material out there. Will you be sort of expanding it to sort of TV shows as well, TV series? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, not at the moment, no, because I am really big on this where, like, if you have a premise or you have a thing, um, especially while you're building it, just, you know, for me, like even like, you know, I'll, I'll say that like, my co-host would be like, oh, let's change this or like, let's change the theme song or let's change the art. Like I'm always like, no, like I'm big on like incremental change over time. So like you can tweak a few things here and you can tweak a few things here, like add a new segment or add something. But like, and so that like, over the course of a year, maybe it, it looks like a completely different thing. But I hate like really sudden changes, uh, which to answer your question, the, the, I want to like stick to the premise and you know what I'm, I'm weirdly like a stickler for it as well <laughs> uh, we're, we're gonna like like if a movie didn't come out in the theater like I won't put it on oh. or um if a movie um yeah I guess if it's like the same weekend we can get away with it but like in general I'm like no let's let's try it. we don't we're not experts right we're just a couple of guys who like movies so yeah. I feel like the very least you can do it's at least make sure that the things came out on the same day. It's like the very least that someone can expect of. So, um, yeah, so we, I think we'll stay a movie podcast. Maybe in the future we'll try and do some other stuff with TV shows, but I don't think we will, uh, to be honest with you. No, you know what? I would like to see, like, oh, I'd like to see you sort of compare like two superhero films, like one, like one back in the day one present day, mm. just like, go, okay. Like Christopher Reeves, Superman, and like basically, yeah, Man of Steel, Superman. And just like, oh yes, see what that I'll was. Tell you what, man, I don't even like superhero movies that much. I tend not to watch them. I, I think the last superhero movie I watched was Black Panther. And that was it. And I stopped watching after that, just because it got too like oppressive, too many. I couldn't keep up with all of the different people. Mm. Um, and they got really long. And I was like, ooh, so who's that guy? Oh, no, you had to have read the comic back in 1983. And then you would have known this was an optional character in a video game in 1997. You could have, I was like, I can't do this. You're Tell not- me the story. And then when yeah. the story is done, it's done. Yeah. You don't want to consult Wikipedia to get the whole sort of full experience. Yeah, it's like if you go out for a meal and someone's like, and you give someone some food and you're like, what's wrong? It's like, oh, no, no, you, what you should have done is you should have had some, a little bit of salt on your tongue before you came. And then it's like, don't ask me to do homework <laughs> when I've come, I've come here to watch a movie. I don't know to have to know all of the things that have happened before this movie come out. So I'm, I, in general, I don't watch many. I think I watched... And then I weirdly, uh, because of how long these things take, I think I watched all of um, Captain Marvel when I was in the barbershop, like just before lockdown. Oh, God, God, dang, God. It's like, oh my Lord, how long were you in that barbershop? Because- well, you, know what you know what it's like when it's, when it's a barbershop, right? Like you <laughs> phone the guy and you tell the guy, all right, just come, come through at three. You get there at three. There's guys who've been there from yesterday at three. And then you're just, you know, you have to get your hair cut. So you just sit there. And I, I, I sat there and I watched the whole of Captain Marvel. <laughs> minute zero to one minute, whatever it was, in that barbershop. Yeah, like this is being like back in the day when I like going to the barbershop. Like, yeah, get there early. Get there swift. Pick out, like, go to your barber and yeah, in, out. <laughs> and it's like, and you, I will also say, I just... I just moved on from a previous barbershop. You know what it's like. So the, this barbershop, the guy was... Um, what, did was like, on, what did you do? What did you do? 
I went there, he was just like really big on like conspiracy theories. He was like big on like explaining to me why COVID isn't really real. Okay. Why this vaccine is going to be all of this kind of stuff. And the, the problem is, is when you get in your haircut, okay. like I'm a, it's, I'm a passive target. So I'm sitting there. And the man said, and the, it was like a Jamaican. It's like, I'm gonna murder him, and I keep just like trying to cut the hair. And I'm just sitting there, and I was like, I can't leave. Uh, I can't leave in the middle of my fade. <laughs> just like, and so I was like, I had to leave. I had to go. And so I tried at the new barber shop. They're great. They're not very organized, but I don't know many barber shops that are. <laughs> and um, that was it. I watched the whole of Captain Marvel. Oh my lord! Yeah, uh, I've got to say. Uh, my, my favorite sort of barbershop experience, like I was working over in America, working in summer camps. And like for one day, went into New York City. Uh, so I was in Uptown in Harlem. And like basically there sitting in this barbershop waiting, waiting. And like basically seeing this barber and people coming up whispering his ear and like, he's like, yeah, like nod. And like someone will just, scurry off and like they'll do something and they'll come back so like for about an hour and a half i've seen the, all of this activity gone on i like sat down in the chair and like yeah like he's like oh so what do you like and like i i say three words he's like oh oh where are you from he's like oh, i'm from the uk he's like what brings you over to the states so i was like yeah i'm working in the summer camp uh, basically looking after kids in uh, upstate, uh, upstate New York. He goes, uh, whereabouts in upstate New York? I went, there's a town called Fishkill. He goes, Fishkill? He goes, yeah. Thing about Fishkill, it had, it's got two prisons, a state prison and like a federal prison. I was like, yeah, I did time in Fishkill. I was like, ah. Yeah. Ah, that's nice. And just uh, uh, as you finished my haircut, it was like going, yeah. So how does it look? I don't know which prison he was in, but you know what? He could have had a jagged peak at the back of my head. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? It looks great. It's fantastic. It's like, oh, no, man. I got you. It's on site. You got you to gotta say, you got to say something. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe you can't. It's like, you it's know, like, even, um, you know what? The, the crazy thing about that is, is even if my barber hadn't been to prison, yeah. I probably still would say, like, yeah, 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 that's fine. <laughs> Just because you're like, what are you going to say? It's already been cut. Like, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> but um, I, I do like the, the barber shops here, man, because I remember in Beijing it was tough because obviously it was like a niche skill. And there was some, like, there was some, like, North African guys who would, um, would cut but like it wasn't the vibe wasn't particularly great like it would take ages to get your hair cut because there was only one place in the city you could really go yeah and um i remember but like i've learned a lot about these things because i remember in south africa i've been going to the same barber shop for like man since i since i probably like left high school really great barber shop and like i just love like the characters there like there's a guy who doesn't do anything in the barber shop it's he doesn't do anything. do anything in the barbershop. But that guy, he's just there for like the bands. Yeah. The guy's just there. Like his guy, his, his nickname was Dog. They used to say, they used to call him Dog. And he would just come in and like, this guy doesn't work there. They'd like send him on errands. But like, he just like, it'd be like going like that every time you're in the barbershop. Huh. And um, yeah, that's what I miss. That's what I miss. I, I'm starting to get it a little bit. I'll, I'll see. But maybe next, next week I'll watch... Uh, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. Whenever the whenever the next barbershop opens yeah, up, like that's, what, probably, that's probably what is going to happen. What I'll simply say to you is this: don't don't watch that film. For the love of God, do not watch that film. No, like, I did. I'm look. I watch. I, I pretty much watch anything. I'm very like. I'm very omnivorous with stuff. Like I try and get everything in there. Yeah. Like all I, the reason why I say do not watch that film is it's bad. It's very bad, and it's bad. Uh, so, like, what I would simply say is, I'm just trying to save you your time. Watch something else. Like, you know, I mean, if you're like, if you're on a Kevin Spacey run, like, watch The Usual Suspects or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been on a Kevin Spacey run in a long time, so 
for obvious reasons. Well, um, like this, then you mentioned seven, and like because he's in that, I was like, okay, like, like yeah, that was you know what that is nuts is that how that concludes. I won't spoil it to people who don't want to watch it, but like that is a very. It was interesting because I remember we did research for it, and he no one knew that he was going to be in it. Mm. Um, I I don't think his name comes up in the in the credits. And that's the kind of thing that's so, so, so difficult to do now because everything leaks and like the social media and stuff. So it'd be so hard to be like to have an actor on a project and not have it leak somewhere. Mm. But like back then, things I guess just had like fewer avenues to leak to. <laughs> and so that was like a surprise that he was, that he was actually in the film. Yeah, no, put this way. The time when that, like the usual suspects, Seven came out, it basically came out about a month and a half between each other. And mm. I was working in a cinema, uh, UCI cinema, big cinema, was a big cinema in North London. And like, it was like, yeah, the film came out, we had it in the largest screens. First two weeks, nothing. They moved it into smaller screens. And on week three, four, when the word went around about the film, before you know it, it was like, yeah, act every night that's the power of those films like yes please yeah, the actions of um, um certain mr spacey in later years but the actual film itself very good can't i can't argue with it both of them i i i, 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 just, I just miss i miss going to the movies i went to go watch um tenet there was that oh break between lockdowns yeah so lockdown one and lockdown two where you could kind of do stuff and there's a lovely um the picture house the ritzy one down in brixton okay gorgeous 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 um i went to go watch once upon a time in hollywood down there um went to go watch tenet um tenet was great um, just because it was so nice because this was after lockdown and we'd all been, you know, indoors for three, four months. And then I had to go out and to go watch a movie, I had to stand in line and have overpriced popcorn and all of that. That was, that was one of my favourite theatres, but my favourite, absolute favourite theatres, it's getting very London-centric, so I apologise, but there's a, a real, there's a great theatre, Peckhamplex, down in South London, uh, five pound tickets. Which is too cheap. It's yeah. probably too no, cheap. No, no, no. Five pounds. <laughs> like when you say five pounds. Probably too. Yeah. And it's probably too cheap. But like, this is the rowdiest <laughs> theater. It is so much fun. Like people like stand up and shout at the, at the screen. Like people get upset. Like, like the really watch was so good. I, I went to go watch um, Joker and oh, yeah. um, someone left the, the light all the lighting hadn't gone down in the in the theater. Someone and someone like, <sighs> like left and stormed off and like went to go tell on someone to be like, oh, can you put down this? Like, they put down the ice. It's like, yeah. And like people shouted at the screen and be like, no, whoa, it was crazy. It was so good. I had such a good time. I miss stuff like that. I miss that kind of like communal experience that we used to have. Uh, uh, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Is that I bet you that cinema, like when you're walking across the carpet, your fl like your feet stick to the like floor. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like I just love it so much, though. I just I just love, and that's why like people say you know streaming is gonna kill cinema. Streaming will never kill cinema because like, streaming because cinema doesn't compete with Netflix or with Amazon videos. Cinema competes with the football or going to the theater. It's a night out. It's doing something in a communal space. That's what it competes with. It doesn't compete, but like, I can watch the same, it's like a restaurant, right? You can make the meal at home cheaper, but that's not why you go to a restaurant. Mm. You go to the restaurant to have nice food with your friends in a nice setting and all of that. That's the same, I think, with cinema and, and streaming services. Now, this is the thing, like, with regards to, like, the cinema and the sort of the shared experience, you can't beat it because, like, okay, for example, um, like, I have I've watched films in very nice movie theatres, like, very all oh, flush, 
you sit down in the chair, go, oh, this is comfy. Love it. And I've been in cinemas, which have been, how can I put it? Ghetto as fuck. But you know what I mean? Where it is rowdy, like the like the chairs barely sticking together and everything like this. But when you have a good film, where you have that really positive shared moment, like the reaction of like yeah. that sort of crowd together. Like um, I remember watching the Raid Two uh, in mm. Wood Green, and like uh, like you've seen the Raid Raid Two. Yeah, 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 seen both of them. Yeah. Basically, the like the prison yard fight when they're like fighting, like they're fighting, and he snaps the guy's leg, and like all of a sudden, everyone in the cinema was like, "Ooh, you, you don't get that on the streaming service where you're like, okay, yeah, that was a messed up moment or that was a spectacular moment." Mm, yeah, it's like, true, man. I that's and that's why we kind of you know that's why we started the podcast. And like, if I had to like. Just- it's about podcasts in general. I think that's a, a good place to start. It start with something that you like would be really um, consistently. Whatever you started about has to be about something that like because and I and from time to time this happens where um, I kind of I have to like edit uh, the podcast. Or I have to like put it together or do like social media for it or whatever. And I get a, bit, a little bit like, you know how it is, like you like it procrastinating or like puts you down because you don't really want to do it. But like, I just always have to keep reminding myself, it's like, dude, no one's making you. This oh, is something. Oh, Lincoln, you cut. So like. You cut out for a moment, for a second, but yeah. Lincoln? Okay. No, you cut out for uh one moment. Hmm. Lincoln. Lincoln. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Like you froze Hello? for a moment there. Um. Yeah. Bear with me one second. One moment. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, like, I think someone was like, I think my lady was like taking a little bit of the bandwidth, and yes, who knows. You you went really slow and you got like cut out a little, but no but, worries. Yeah, but you were saying about like podcasts. No, I was just saying that like, are we recording everything? Yes, good? yes. I was just saying that um, I always have to like remind myself that like this is some this is something I chose. Mm-hmm. This is a hobby or like a passion that I chose. No one's making me do it, and the easiest thing in the world in the world to do is to just stop. And if you don't want to do that, then just do it. And that's that's kind of the, the attitude that I've taken. And like when I first started, I had to be like, it has to come out every week at this time, blah, blah, blah. But like as time's gone on, every two weeks. So be- oh, I think we're frozen again. Yeah. I think we're frozen again. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, it seems like uh, having some technical issues. It happens, like it. It happens, but yeah, you were saying every two weeks. Yeah, so that's but the podcast comes out now every two weeks. Um, 
yeah, it was initially every week, but that was just too difficult for me. Like in my personal life, and you have other things that you want to do, and you know. Mm. Um, so as a result, you know, that's what we settled on, and now it's, I'm much happier with it. It's a good balance. So it's, it's what I can do. Just kind of do what you can. I think it's yeah. good advice. Yeah. No, but like this is the thing, as you were saying with regards to earlier in the podcast, with um, uh, like using Andrew Schwartz as an uh, example, uh, building something more, building something greater. Um, yeah, as I was saying. Um, oh, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying, with regards to like what you said earlier about Andrew Schwartz and like building something out there like outside of what you're doing with regards to your stand-up to like help draw people in. Um, doing that whole process is one of those things where it's not going to be an easy thing and it's going to take a long time. Like with, like with your podcast, how do you think you're going to sort of draw people in on other things or is it just a standalone thing right now? Um. Well, it's something that I enjoy doing, and especially during the pandemic. One of the hardest things, I think, in terms of comedy, stand-up specifically, is that, like, you just kind of stop talking to other comics. Mm. And if I could give someone, like, advice in terms of what I've learned about stand-up, about comedy, and I'm not saying, like, I'm a, you know, a headline or whatever, but... One of the things I have learned is that um, hang out with other comics as much as you can. Just hang out with your tribe, talk to like riff, make fun, like jokes. That's so like important for the skill of comedy. And the purpose of B plot is twofold. The first purpose is to keep doing something while stand up is gone. So you have something out there. But the second purpose is also is talking to my friend who I think is funny and keeping the, you know, keeping the, the, the motion is the lotion, like keeping the kind of the grooves going of how to riff, how to tell jokes, how to be funny, how to try and make someone laugh. And those, that's twofold. So like the best of times, I think, more often than not so in terms of building outside of it i'm very happy to like do the podcast but you never know maybe we want to you know try something a bit different maybe in the future you want to look at doing a live show mm. doing a live recording or you want to um do something visual or, you know like a watch along i think there's really interesting things that people are doing on like stuff like twitch um where they do watch alongs and people are really into that. So like, there's, there's a few things that you can try and do. Yeah. I would say this about with regards to the sort of difference between the comic scene um, here and in, um, like in America with regards to the whole sort of podcast medium. It, seem like it seems, I don't know if it's a case of because it, like people are being more aware of podcasts over in America how it can affect in a proactive way with comedy and basically drawing people in compared to the UK. It seems like America has been more proactive than the UK for now, if you get what I mean. I think Ricky Gervais was sort of one of the sort of like pioneers over here, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, yeah, that's the first one I remember. This was just a much bigger market. There's yeah. a bit more, there's like more space to do stuff like that. Whereas, I mean, in the US, for example, you can be a comic in New York or you can yeah. be a comic in LA or you can be a comic in Chicago. Mm. Um, and you can just be there and work that city and survive. You, you know, you're not going to be super rich, but you can make a decent living. Mm. In the UK, really, if you're not in London, it's very, very difficult to, you know, to sustain like you can you can always there's other cities obviously where you can go but like the biggest clubs would probably be here like the biggest clubs in a in a, in a smaller space or a smaller kind of surf area would be here um so it's a little bit it's a little bit harder 
But like in, in the American comedy scene, I think they're always innovating. I think they've always come up with new, incredible things. And I, in general, like when I'm watching comedy, I almost always watch US comedy just because I think, um, yes, those guys are so, those guys and girls are so good. And they push so far forward that, I, that I'm always following and I'm always trying to figure out what this person is doing or what that person is doing. Um, whether it's with the special or with the way they shoot the specials or with podcasts, the way the far they've come, I think it's very impressive. I see. Like, so with this, like when, like say a year from now, maybe, God forbid, to like, what sort of strategies do you think you might take forward from what you've observed from other parts of the world, like comedy world? to sort of like help improve things for you? Improve in what sense? Um, what do you mean? Uh, basically improve your career, like help you get that sort of that leg up, say. Um, hmm. Well, I, I'll hope to grow the podcast mm -hmm. um, by coming on such podcasts, as lovely podcasts as yourself um, and, other, and other things. I'd love, to, I'd love to grow that even further. Um, I think I would like in the next two years if we can do a live show. Mm -hmm. if we can like if we have enough listeners where we can attract people to come and and, and pay it to pay for a ticket. And I don't know what that show would look like. I don't know what it would look like at all. But like I think it would be nice to do something live with someone else. Um, that's also the other thing because I do you know a lot of it stand up based. You by yourself, and I love it. But it's also really kind of nice to have someone to go back and forth on um and like i've the few times that i've been to improv or that i've seen improv i always think it would be so difficult for me to do just because your instinct is um isn't necessarily to be generous your instinct is as soon as there's silence to say something so that we can laugh because mm -hmm. if you're not getting laughs you're dying yeah. but in improv it's like the opposite you have to like you have to say something boring so someone else can say something funny. And it's very difficult for me. It sounds incredibly arrogant, but I, it's, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable just um, saying something boring because what if you say something boring? <laughs> you both said something boring. Um, so it is nice to have someone else on the, on the other side of it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, in terms of strategy, I really don't know. Man. I'm, just, I'm kind of figuring out as we go along and you know you see something that you like but you think maybe i can do this maybe i can do that and you try and see how it goes but on the whole no i, I can't give you any strategies i don't know maybe you can give me some strategies maybe you have some stuff that you've been working on hey, you can keep it under the hat no i this is the thing like when you said yeah doing the watch along like i would say hey if you do like if you do the watch along on a live stream on twitch or using restream to put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook and sort of build up a following on both those platforms. Like, yeah, that'd be great as a starting point. And from there, if you're doing that, say once a month or once every sort of two weeks or whatnot, with you just pick either a genre or a year you want to go with and yeah, take it forward from there. Because like the whole thing is, it's always, it's always about building community and being like a good community servant. And then people will come along on that side of things. That's the way I see it. I could be wrong and other people might have other sort of ideas from it, but I, I do love the, that, that idea of doing a watch along because- You know what, it's, sorry, I was just gonna pick up on something that you said just about platforms specifically. And maybe this answer some of it, the reason I pick a pod, why I pick podcasts, because I obviously I love podcasts, I listen to it quite a lot, but um, more specifically is that like every other platform that you pick, TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or whatever, mm. um, well, I say content platforms, so things like specifically TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, there's an algorithm between you and the person that you're trying to reach. Yes. And with podcasts, it's not, there's nothing. It's just you and, and the listener. 
So yeah. like, even if you listen to a quarter, a quarter of the people listen to you on a podcast, then would watch your YouTube content. That's still super, super valuable because those people sort you out because it's not an easy way thing to find a podcast in general. Most people don't know how to find one. So if they've sought you out, that's a really strong connection. And if you then, it's more than likely that if you ask someone, listen, send me like five pounds, I'm working on this and I think this would be a really great thing. They're more than likely to do it if it's a podcast. There's some, some podcasts I've been listening to for like seven years. I can't tell you if there's any YouTubers I've been following for seven years or on Instagram. I can't tell you that because I, you know, you, you, the algorithm moves it around. You don't watch a video for a, a few months and you don't go looking for the video. You just walk well, I'll just watch something else now. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why it's part of it, I guess, laziness, but also part of it's just kind of like, this is very fickle. Whatever I go into, I don't want to put up a bunch of things on YouTube or put up a bunch of, of things on TikTok or whatever. The algorithm, I can't figure out the algorithm or I'm too old, too dumb to figure it out. And <laughs> just, that's all this effort that I've wasted. So that's why podcasts I think are so valuable. And that's why I think it's such a, such a, a great medium and something worthwhile and putting content out in. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. And like the only reason why I mentioned these other platforms, it's just just like the amount of people, even with the algorithm, which can get in the way or like basically edit who sees what uh, from what content you put out there. It is a factor and it plays, it comes into play. But if you get like, if you see a hundred people see it and then you get one or two people which come along to the podcast and join that podcast tribe from your efforts there, that's always a good thing. Like if you're putting enough content out there, that sort of drip, drip, drip can turn into like a, a del deluge of people coming into yourself on the podcast. The one thing I'd say to anyone about if they're into this sort of content like production is like if you are on Twitch, if you are on YouTube, if you are on many of these other platforms, you're just a renting land, if you get what I mean, on these mm. platforms. With a podcast, it is yours. It's like a blog as well. It is yours. It's not down to other people. And look, with the realm of where the world we live in at this present time, where if you say the wrong thing once like basically gatekeepers and such can sort of tear things down a podcast which you host is a very good thing to have same thing with a blog so it's just like yeah you can build something proper on that side of things but it just aids if you are on these other platforms in helping you build something greater that's all yeah fair enough fair enough yeah so like I sim I will say it again, like if you do a watch along thing, uh yeah, by all means, I think you'll get a number of people which will be interested in that. It just comes mm. down to uh, like, yeah, um there is a, a long road or ahead of you. I'm sure you'll come up with uh, some creative ideas. Yeah, I mean I hope so. I hope um you know you have to kind of back yourself to to try and do something. Mm. Um yeah, I think if I had just been, I think I would have found it very difficult to just be in lockdown and just not have anything, you know, to not have any sort of like creative outlet. I think that would have been very, very difficult. Mm. No, I hear you. I hear you. I have to ask one, like, coming towards the end, what is your favorite film and why? My favorite film has kind of moved over the, over the years. I can tell you what it is now. I can give you a long answer, I can give you a short answer. What, what, do you, what would you prefer? I'm always gonna go with the long answer. All right, so long answer is, like my favorite film always used to be, um, I think I started off being uh, School of Rock when I watched it the first time. Yeah. And then we could, like, there was like a movement where like I went in and out of, of movies. The movie that I, for the longest time, would have said is my favorite movie is Goodfellas. Ah. Love Goodfellas. I watched it fairly recently. It still holds up. It's just 
oh, that last, I think the last 30 minutes of Goodfellas is some of the best filmmaking I've ever seen in my whole life. Just, uh, it's brilliant. And then re recently, for the last few years, my favorite film, I think, and probably now of all time, is Heat. Oh. Um, Al Pacino, um, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, yep. Michael Manns. Uh, just, I, I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's, I think it's one of my, it's one of the best movies I've ever made. And like, I think about the movie a lot. I think about it. Certain movies do this to you. Like they seep into your, into your, like the brain, into like the grooves of your brain. And there's things that I say that I just say because it's from heat. The action is the juice, like that kind of thing. I just say it because that's with my, in my mind. And like Will Ferrell movies used to be like this for me a lot. We're like, I could quote a Will Ferrell movie like in my sleep. <laughs> but um, Heat for me, it's my favorite movie. What about yours? My favorite movie, my favorite movie of all time is Goodfellas. Love that film without a doubt. Like when it comes to action films, ooh, the Raid 1 and 2, mm. Mm. Like, like basically the whole concept of that film was just like, okay bonkers when you watch it like i watched the raid 2 first before watching the raid uh, mm. i was like watch raid 2 i was like oh my god this is amazing look yeah the last 15 minutes of that film no <laughs> like, i think i think raid 2 is actually better than than raid 1 in like, my opinion like this is the thing the raid like the raid the first raid film like because it was just set in it, such an enclosed space and everything like that you're like great but like the second read film, it got a little bit long in like in the middle, but still. Mm. But when it came down to like when they start like taking over and like the sort of boss fights at the end, my God. <laughs> like, look. There's, a, there's another movie that they, that the same kind of team and actor made. I think it's on Netflix. I think it's like the. It, the night comes for us or it comes for us or something like that it's called right and um let me try and find it for you it comes for us oh man it's going to be very embarrassing yeah the night comes for us it's like um it's set in indonesia yes and it's long it's brutal it basically has um the, it's just, it's basically like the first raid in terms of like there's not even because I, I remember the second raid had like a bit of an ebb and a flow and like like breathed a little bit yeah um this is just the, like the first raid but stretched over two hours so like by the end of the movie you are exhausted <laughs> like you you feel like you've been fighting because those guys have just been fighting for 30 minutes straight and like as soon as you oh okay that's the end of the fight it just picks up again and by the end, they're like throwing punches and they're missing and like we've got cleavers stuck in their shoulders and stuff. But like, and you are tired because you're like, just please, for God's sake. Let's end it now. Let's end it now. So <laughs> I, I want to go to a bed. <laughs> it, and I can see it. Just yeah, so it's a very yeah, it's a it's very good though. I can I recommend it. I haven't watched it in a while, but um, it's the same production team, it's the same actors as well. Oh. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Oh, okay. Awesome. Do you like the John? Do, do you like the John Wick movies? Because I feel like that's very similar in. Uh, look, I love the John. I love the John Wick movies. Look, John. Look, John Wick. This is how it goes for me. John Wick one, great. John Wick. John Wick three, outstanding. Then John Wick two because like John Wick two, it was kind of like going okay. We've had a really successful first film, and we're trying to work out how we're going to get it to sort of carry on if you get what I mean so and yeah look and you know what I kind of like that I kind of like the because it became such a weird like first John Wick is like a classic like 80s 70s film very clean uh very simple story yeah well right. two was like right. he's, fight, dude, he's fighting he's fighting common on a plaza in Rome I'm like come on this is what we this is what the people paid their money for Keanu yeah. Reeves in common fighting to the death but like this is the thing about john wick sorry to interrupt but the thing about the like the whole john wick series like it, 
it's a very simple premise. Like, yes, they stole his car. They killed his the puppy from which was given to him by his wife, the last present. And then it was like, okay, get that. But when it got, like the thing what made it really different for me was when they got to the Continental Hotel, right? And then it was like, oh, wait, there's this whole other level which you don't see. There's this whole other level which is going on. And you're like going, okay. So you're kind of like going, right. And then when you're like going, okay, building, 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 building. And like, you're like, oh, right. It is a diehard action film, but there's a little bit more going on. And like with the introduction of the Bowery Continental and then basically the high table, all of that, you're kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting more excited to see where it leads to. I'm looking forward to John Wick 4. Like, yeah, all I've got to Yeah, see. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Yeah. I loved it. I would, one of the things I remember liking from the first John Wick movie that I haven't seen in a lot of films mm. is you rarely see this, um, which is the villain being scared. Um, if, if you remember in the first John Wick movie, um, Theon, I don't know the name of the actor. I'm sorry. Is it Alfie Allen? Theon yeah. Greyjoy? Yes. He, he, he kills... Um, Spoiler, sorry. He kills the, the dog and after John Wick's wife has died and yeah. like, you know, beat, beats him up, blah, blah, blah. And then when he comes back and he tells his dad what he's done, his dad's like, yeah. like ashen, ashen faced, is scared. And I'm like, when was the last time you've seen an action movie where the villain at the beginning of the movie is afraid of the yeah. hero? Usually it's the other way around. Usually the hero has to overcome this and the, and the villain is cocky and, and evil and bad. But like this time around, the villain's like, um, what, have you, what have you done? And in that moment, it tells you everything that you need to know about the movie. It tells you that this guy is a badass. It tells you that this guy is clearly like, that this villain is dead, that this guy is, is going to die and that it's going to be grisly. And I was like, that's such a beautiful choice that someone made when they wrote that screenplay that I'm, that I, that's one of the, that's when I, I clicked for me with John Wick. Yeah, no, but like this is the thing, they did it all in the trailer because you watch the trailer and it's like, oh, uh, like it was like, they kept saying his name, John Wick, John Wick, John Wick. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm good. I mean, I'm curious. Let me go and see mm. the film, went in, watched it. I was like, like basically when the first, after the first fight, when he's like coming back, I was like, Okay, I'm I'm in for whatever this show, like wherever it goes, I'm in. And that was the first film. I was like, I'm in. Second film, I was like, I'm yeah, I'm definitely in. Here's my money. Shut up. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, the, yeah, the third one got pretty big as well. The third oh. one got very like wide. Yeah, but the third one got to like it did have uh, two of the guys from the raid on it. And, yeah, yeah, and you like their fight sequence at the end of it was like fantastic but like i got to say um in the middle when it had halle berry like that whole mm. sequence come on now freaking awesome so yeah, right, yeah. I, I didn't know where you were gonna go you said come on now you took a very long pause oh, i was no, like no. i thought you i thought you were gonna dunk on it it's so obvious it's like no dunk on her no like that was like some of the best action like sequences you could actually see and like when the dog goes running along with joy in its heart and then like basically attacks some guy in his throat, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's pretty grim stuff. Yeah, I mean, I love those movies. I'm a, and like my first love in terms of films will always be action movies because I um, grew up in South Africa and I don't know why that, I remember it this way, but um, uh, because of, I think, I think it's a legacy of like the cultural boycott and stuff. Mm where movies didn't come to South Africa until fairly late or like after they've been around the world a few times. Yeah. And as a result, um, video shops, DVD shops, we had Mr. Video and V's Video. They, they were bastions of the community way longer than it may be in other parts of the world. Also, internet, broadband internet in South Africa is still not great. Streaming starting to come in just about now, like a few years ago, but also 
way later than other places. Like most small towns still had a DVD shop. You can go and rent DVDs. <laughs> and so um, as a result, the movies that like of my childhood, the ones that I watched the most were like B action action B movies mm. like um like you know Van Damme, uh Dudikoff, Cynthia Rothrock, um anything that Seagal did, um all of those so like I grew up on action movies and I have like of weird 80s B action movies, I've seen all of them. Like I, I I'm sure I've seen all of them. I have like I, I'm good with it. And so those are still the movies that I love the most. But I, yeah, dude, I just missed that. Do you, do you remember like when we used to go to like the DVD shop or like the video shop? That shit was, oh, was oh, a, a whole experience. Oh, look, put it this way, back in the day when uh, Blockbuster was still around and like you had to do, look, you had to do that Friday pilgrimage. And like you had to, like, it wasn't like, you couldn't go to like over here. You couldn't like go, hey, let me stroll along. You had to go there on a mission, especially if it was a new film, which has just come out. Because like, by the, if you got there and you like, you saw the sort of empty panels where the like the DVD oh. the videos were. Ooh. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, before you go, on. what was the system over here in terms of um, taking out a DVD? Because I can tell you what we did is you had the DVD cover up there and then there was a little wooden block right underneath the big DVD. You take the wooden block, yeah. you take it to the counter and then they give you the movie. What was the system over here? Uh, basically, like what it would be, like you have the DVDs or the videos up on yeah. the shelves and like, where, like you take them off and where, where you take off the video or the DVD, you take yeah. that long to the counter, then they put the video or the DVD into the case, and all what would be left would be a picture of that. Oh, okay. Or DVD. Words. So if you just saw just a row of pictures, you were done. You couldn't get that film. Yeah, but, but was it a picture of the DVD that you had just taken? Yeah. So, oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So it would just be like, yeah, that yeah. Makes sense. so if it was, say, True Lies, for example, like you would just see like Arnold Schwarzenegger's face. Just like just on the picture, yeah. it was, and you were That's like, a great like, film. Like, yeah. I, and I, I tell the story on, on on my podcast as well. But like, I remember in my town, you used to be able because I lived in a very in a relatively small town. We used to be able to um, if a, if you went to the video shop mm. and the video was out, you could ask the guy behind the counter like who took it, and he'd be like, oh, so and so. And then you could phone around and be like, hey, dude, have you watched it yet? <laughs> if you're like, have you watched it? And the person would be like, yeah, yeah, we just, because that's like when people took out like four DVDs, four movies yeah. a night, right? Oh. And, you can, and you can be like, I didn't, can I come and get it from you? Yeah, 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 just take it back tomorrow. And then you could drive to that person's house, yeah. pick up the movie that they had just watched. <laughs> and then you could give it back the next day. But this would cause like rifts. Okay. friendships would be torn apart because obviously you know what people would do they would return it late because they didn't have to pay for it or they would not rewind it people get penalties on their on their accounts their accounts get frozen and it's not like now there's all sorts of options if you were frozen out you're done of, of the video shop you're done my dude you're, you're done sunday night movies for you every night there's okay. commercials all the way it was yeah. a completely different time oh uh, like one of the things what what makes me laugh is when you like today when you like go to a kid and go, you know what? Hey, you used to have it on videotape. That was like, what? What's a videotape? Two, you had to re you had to fast forward and rewind. Like like none of this scrubbing malarkey. It was just like, huh? <laughs> and yeah, you had to go to a shop and get the actual video from there or the DVD from there. There's like, what are you talking about? That is surreal. Look, man, I'm, and I'm going to say it for people who don't want to hear it. This way is way better. This, the what we have now is so much better than what it was. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. We used to have, you used to have to physically go and be like, oh, so can I watch this movie? And they'd be like, yeah, can you come back to me? It's like, what is that shit? What is that? 
<laughs> what is that shit? We have to used to go to someone and ask them, can I watch this movie? And they'd be like, oh, we don't really have the movie. And you'd be like, okay. And then you just watch a movie that you didn't even really want to watch. What sort of shit is that? <laughs> you're, you're just like, no. <laughs> What's the point? No wonder the environment is in the state it's in. It's because of all of the stress people carried around for years watching stuff that they don't want to watch. <laughs> you can't pause anything. This is way better. So I'm never going to be like, to a kid, oh, you don't know how easy you got it. I'm going to be like, if they complain, I'm going to be like, yeah, oh, that's I'm going to complain with you. This should be, this should work better. Look, I can have the film on my phone, my tablet, my TV, like anywhere Com- in comparison to like, yeah, VCR, DVD player. Um, uh, no, that's terrible. I and mean, like, you know, the VCR is still more than the, like the DVD player as well. Cause I remember the first DVD player we got okay. was, I think my, da- my dad bought the DVD player off a guy who was trying to um, not split his positions with his wife in a divorce. So the guy was, so the guy was getting divorced and he was just like having a fire sale and selling everything. And so my dad being the, um, the kind of compulsive spontaneous person that he is yeah. bought a DVD player of the guy. And also what we then learned was a very, um, a very expensive guitar that my brother learned to play on. It's like a 1960 something acoustic guitar. Um, that was, that my dad bought for nothing. And I always think about like how much joy um, that DVD player brought me and my family and how much joy my brother got from the guitar and how all of that joy is like built on the broken broken foundations of someone (laughs) of someone else's family (laughs) of someone someone else's family in tatters and our and our family just built our own family on top of that family (laughs) on the scaffold on the scaffolding of their nightmares Oh, the found uh, uh, joy. There you go. Yeah, it was, it's really, it's quite, it's quite sad. I don't, you know, I don't regret it. But, um, it's just, uh, it's just interesting to think about, I guess. Oh no, you don't regret it. You celebrate it. No, I mean, <laughs> dude, I watched, I watched Gladiator. It was the first movie I watched in the movie. I watched Gladiator. That was great. Ah, that yeah, is a good fun. film. That is a very good film. <laughs> oh man, got to say, yeah. <laughs> That is a funny story. I do like that. Now, I have to reveal that I am a supreme being of cosmic power. Uh, Yes, I have the power to grant you one wish. But here's the thing. Uh, You can't have world peace. No, you can't have you can't write things down on a list and go. I wish everything on this list would come true. What would your one wish be? Oh, I don't know. I guess, I guess my wish would be to live forever. I think that would be nice. Really? I know people say it's bad. Right. But you'd see a lot of stuff. And then when you die, you're still dead. So, although I want to, no, actually, I want to be in like of the side of sound mental health. That's the problem. Because if you live forever, if you're like, if you've been living for a thousand years and like the top of your head is like scraping the floor, then that's not good. So I'm, can I withdraw that? Can I withdraw that wish? Mm, okay, okay. So I don't want to withdraw. Um, let me think. Um, right now, I'm very practical. I wish lockdown would end. I wish COVID would go away, so we can go back to living our lives. Now that's a little bit too much like world peace to me. <laughs> so, now, how's that world peace? We're still going to be still going to be bombing each other and all sorts after this. You look, I'm going to tell you what I do think. 100 percent at the end of this pandemic. Yes. If I know anything. We will have learned nothing. We will have learned nothing. The next time a virus comes around, it's going to be like we had no idea. <laughs> We're going to be shocked. We will have learned nothing. Uh, like I would say some people will learn uh, things are from our, how can I say, our trying 2020 and like, yes, a somewhat challenging 2021. Nope. <laughs> Even those people that learned it will, I promise you, I promise you, the next time anything like this comes around, we will, we're going to be like, I can't believe this. This has never happened to me. Like, I promise you, people uh, don't, 
people have such a short memory when it comes to stuff like this. Hey, look, you're going to be here for, like, you wish for eternal life. So, yeah, I, you know what I mean? You'll be here to keep advising people, like, hey, back in 2020, 2021, there was a pandemic. I know it's like 40, 45, but come on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and people would tell, and you know what? If someone had looked through a pandemic just now and like they were like, guys, we should be careful, be like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. That was years ago. It was <laughs> six months, it was six months ago. Six months like. Yeah. Yeah, all I've got to simply say is, um, yeah, the concept of time for 2020 uh, was thrown so out of whack for me. Like I, you know, the Australian fires in nineteen, like nineteen, like twenty nineteen. Yeah, uh, that was wild. Yeah, yeah, that that felt like in May, like that was years ago. I was like, I, yeah, oh, that was years ago. No, that was like that was six months ago. I was like, okay, so yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, crazy times. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, but hey. Lincoln, I got to say, you have been outstanding today. Can you tell these lovely people where they can find you and how they can find your podcast? All right. So, um, if you've enjoyed uh, this conversation, you want to check out my podcast. Um, it's B Plot Podcast. So, B uh, dash Plot Podcast or B Plot, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. Um, and my Instagram, which is Lincoln on the mic, so L I N C O L N on the mic, ending in C. And uh, also check out my co host, uh, Sam J. Golden, um, also really funny dude. He's also an illustrator, so he draws all our album art, all our artwork for us and stuff. So that's very nice of him. He's a good guy to check out as well. So yeah, Lincoln on the mic on Instagram, and also kind of B plot podcast wherever you find your podcast. Excellent, outstanding. Well, also do I put that into the show notes, into the blah, 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 into the description? Uh, so yeah, please uh, go to Lincoln's uh, podcast website and yes, enjoy his company and his show. I've got to say, uh, I've listened to a couple of the podcasts and I have enjoyed them so far. So yes, I shall be back. <laughs> but what I'd like to say to you, Lincoln, is thank you for coming on today. You have been outstanding. Uh, yes. And I'd like to say thank you to you, my friends, my life warriors out there. Please stay safe, stay well, be awesome, be fantastic. Be all the positive beasts you can be in this world. And then some. Hoorah. Peace. Ah. And we are...